they allow their opponents to take the lead. I feel like G2, they need to do away with that here. We need to see the G2 that we saw against Nip, who just immediately started smashing face right out the gates. We need to see that G2 here on Mirage. I could not agree more. I want to see just that all-out battle, and it's going to start up pretty quickly here. The smokes are already in the air. They're not going to fake it. They're not going to run back. They're going to fight Shush, though. But a powerful headshot to bring down Hunter. That's a big, good beginning for the heroic side of things. Bomb is being attempted maybe on the other side, but Shush and Stout showing up. Oh, they're hitting every single headshot. Nexer is on his own, and he is getting hunted down. Shush with the kill. What a powerful defense. It's a triple kill for Shush and a double for Stout. And G2 get wiped out in the opening round of Mirage. Yeah, that first one, man. That first headshot was something. The second one, though, coming up with the good team. I mean, Shush just eliminates Hunter and Nico in the pistol round. They're the top two performers for G2 so far this tournament. And you take them out of the map and the, out of the map in a crucial round. There you go. That's why Kadian is just, you know, wagging his finger at Shush, being like, yeah, keep that kind of level up. Keep it up, because here we are in the replay. We see it, and there was a massive gap in this smoke as well. I don't know if Jax was even aware of it. Yeah, maybe not. It's really hard when you only have one smoke to smoke jungle like that, because you really can't throw it so that it covers everything. There's always going to be a little gap on one side. Sometimes you'll throw it deeper in to try and stop that from happening, but it's a pistol round. You only had so many smokes, and they just couldn't cover it all. Now, they got the bomb. Oh, no, they, just, they went straight for it. Wow. Rinse and repeat here. Rinse and repeat, except that this time Nico scrimmed his way out here. Ahead of the smokes. They have no idea that he's here. He had to win that duel, though. Again, Shush with a double. That should have been a dream for them, that the fact that they were able to get that fight so early on, but it's not. Spray almost transferred onto Hunter. Man, this is a hard round to win if you're on the G2 side. Two versus three. Hamanek with the Deagle. Hunter on that AK-47 flash. No one peeks behind it. Got to be careful here as well. No armor on Amanek. Hunter, though, he has head armor, so against the MP9, he can stay alive for a couple of seconds. Maybe, yep, without head armor, he would have been dead. He's on one health. Is that enough? Oh, the grenade. It's going to come flying in. It's a touchdown. Hunter is gone, and Amanek, they didn't even get the bomb plant. At least if they would have had that, Amanek could have had a slight chance. Yeah. Now he's in the same amount of trouble. And even worse still, they actually have another EG grenade. If they really wanted to dunk on him, they could. He's got the right idea. Missing the headshot, though, unfortunately. Comes back for more. Still 35 seconds. He's picked up an AK, but Stown is going to be walking up behind him. And Heroic, they will just slip out of that round. But scary. So close. Still, that feels good for G2, because you were at least showing that you were capable of doing some damage here. It was such a near run thing for Heroic in this round. So much so that Kadian is just scratching his head. You know, <laughs> at this point, you just have to be like, okay. Uh, you cannot get complacent if you're heroic right now. You're up 1-0. This is also a map, as Blade pointed out, that you're confident on, that you're comfortable on. You've been getting some decent results on Mirage if you're heroic. So you're within striking range here, heroic. It's all about keeping focus now and not giving G2 an opportunity to get back into this. G2, well, Nico trying to get the headshot with that Deeg already. We've seen this setup several times from heroic so far. The major, This major, Cadian posted up with the MP9, stopping to watch his back. Even Refresh getting in on the action. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very aggressive move in the middle. But when you have the rifles for it, maybe it's not a bad idea. I would definitely caution against taking too many peaks against this particular team, because they have such an... Just too many people that are good with Deagles on it. Nico obviously ahead of that game, but it's not like Hunter and Jax can't do the same. So I'd be real careful. So far, no action in the middle, really. Kadian is lurking around, maybe going to go and see if he can find something at top. Could be flashed in even by a teammate. Comes the flashbang. Yep, he's going to run for it, but they're still really far back. Impressive restraint for G2, considering that they haven't really seen anyone, they haven't really got anywhere. Maybe about to hit that B bomb site. Tess is, though, off angle near the truck. Hard to peek this one with Eagle, though, and he's going to get the early spray on one. Wants to fall back and stay alive. Nexa will not allow it. Refresh, he's out in the open. He's got to be real careful. Living is better than getting a kill right now if you're refresh. That is so important. He's still the M4, though. Grenade onto Nexa, and he blows up. Kadian trying to get onto the bomb site. Nico still behind the bench. He needs a strong headshot right now. It's not going to happen. And Amanek on his own. He put the bomb down. It is not going to be enough. Refresh. That's the power of staying alive. You come back later and just get the kill anyway. You get the bomb planted. That's going to be the main thing here for G2. 
I mean, I mean, both of these teams have played this map several times so far this turn. I mean, G2 three times, Heroic twice. They've gotten good results on it, but that means that there's tape out there. You know, there's no element of surprise now coming into this. You're going to have to be adapting your game plan on the fly to try and keep ahead of your opponents if you're G2 and if you're Heroic, because G2 are going to know how Heroic want to hold on CT side now. So Heroic are having to make adjustments on the fly to be unpredictable, and it's the same for G2. We know that G2 have a really solid, scary B apartments pop that they like to throw in there, and that has worked really well with Amanek eating himself out the window. So we even saw them use that as a fake earlier on, trying to lean into that. So it's a question of, you know, where are G2 going to be making their changes? And for now, it's looking like at least a default hold, just trying to wait and see where Heroic were going to go. Yeah, but what a crazy play from Katie. And again, we're at the major semi-final, and he decides to take his newly bought AWP, run into underpass on his own, no backup, just to try and get a quick flick on someone. And he's going to take down Hunter instead. So even if the first initial skirmish failed, they're going to make up for it anyway. Hunter is down. You would think that Nexa would have gone for the peak. They just were not aware of where Kadian was on that map at that point because he was definitely in position to catch one out. Nico, did his barrel get spotted? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Shush with a nade in hand. If Nico just, instead of jumping up on that pot, just actually went for it, it maybe could have worked out. Tessis kept forward by the Molotov, didn't want to try and fall back through it. 50 seconds on the clock, and again, we have this very slow and tentative style for G2 at the beginning of this map. Really nervous about making any mistakes. They're finally going to get some mid-control. I mean, this can kind of work. If they can get rid of Kadian, who's up on the ticket booth, it's really hard to get rid of him here. But if they can, then Nico can be sprung into action and they can collapse on the bomb site. It's a lot to ask for, though. Good smoke's going down. Kadian relocating. Excellent shot to drop Nexa. And now all of it has kind of gone out the window. I have no idea how they're going to get onto this bomb site. 23 seconds. Nico smoked off and they see the gun barrels down. Yep, he knows. Jax is done. And so is the bomb. This is a tight defense right here. That second kill, especially for KD, and that kind of gave up the whole game plan. They knew what was coming. Heroic, they're going to find a fourth round. They're going to steal that AWP as well. Oh, this is a good start for the Danes. This is Shush just taking over. He's got seven kills, one death in four rounds, Anders. Just utterly destroying G2 right now. And, well, I want to reiterate what Maniac was bringing up on the desk going into this series or into the second map is now we get to find out how G2 are going to adjust to having lost a map because that was the first time they've lost a map so far this major. So now we're going to see, are they are they going to be able to get some of that aggression going or not? Tactical timeout called. You see immediately Malik and Nexa having a bit of a powwow trying to figure out what they need to do to get the, the team some confidence here. They des yeah, I mean, good, good job taking the time out, right? Especially even though it's early on, yeah, I think this is confidence. That's the key, isn't it? Good games, by the way. That guy with the time said MIBR is still undefeated at this point. We can appreciate that. Memes are important after all. So. Fifth round coming your way. And memes are not going to cut it for G2. They're going to have to bring some real firepower and why not start it right here? Setting up for a bit of a hit outside of the A bomb site. Shush and KD are no inside of it. So not that big of a presence in terms of the defense. If they're quick about it, maybe they could knock one of them out and get the quick bomb plant and then go from there. Here we go, the jump through, but Kadian not missing many shots right now. No. That is actually terrifying. If he's going to be good on this map with the AWP, that's a huge challenge to G2 that I'm not even sure Amanek is going to be up for, even if he's been playing better this tournament. Four versus five. They're trying to get in with the bomb, but they just can't actually get it. Hunter, he's got it right here, and he's going to win the fight. Jax with the headshot. Is there a way? Can they actually find it through? Nico, who needed that headshot. It is still a 2 on 1, but man, they get close in this one, and Hunter is on the escape. He's got an M4 as well as the Kevlar and the bomb, so he's got that going for him, but now this is going to be where Heroic, I think, just buddy up. Yeah. Just Make it so that you can trade with each other. You don't need to be taking any risks here going out for duels or anything like that. As soon as that bomb gets planted, I want to see both of the heroic players kind of just tag team it together and go into the retake. Yeah. So yeah, Tessa's immediately into underpass. No time wasted on his side. Yeah, he wants to see if he can lock it down from that direction. They have a Molotov, so Tessa's, if he just guesses it right, throws it behind the bench, that is probably going to be the end of Hunter. Instead, oh. it's by the truck. It's still not that bad. It's a position that he now doesn't have to check and there are plenty of them on the B-bomb site, so not as good as it could have been, but not a wasted Molotov either. Kadian coming in from the catwalk, and now they're starting to make 
A fair bit of noise here. They do have a kit on either player. There's the initial challenge. Hunter, good spree. Can he find one more? That's going to bring them online if he can. Need will not kill KD. And now just a question of avoiding that AWP. Yep, he's going to make a run for it. Hunter has done it. One versus two. That is an expert play. Ice cold. Hunter is in his element on the land. His coach has said it. The analysts have said it. Everybody has said it. And now we're seeing it. This guy turns up in the big rounds for his team if he can just survive deep into the round he keeps dying to shots through smoke and everything just everything is conspiring against him but if he can survive to the end of the round hunter can win you those rounds g2 on the board nice and early here four to one heroic in the lead on the ct side but g2 for showing some fight the nice thing here i mean well the nice thing the intense pressure that's going to be put on some of these players here for g2 not only Hunter, the expectations are high, but Nico as well. They can feel it, there's no doubt. But they took the timeout, they bought pistols, they won the round anyway. Yeah, that's a lot to build on. But now it has to keep going. They have to roll these rounds to get Acadian straight exploding Hunter's head. That was a close range shot, and he just walked into the scope. Four versus five. Nico playing it against Shushout on the A ramp. And Nexus sneaking in. That's a strong kill. Tessas hits the ground. Four versus four. A little bit of an attempt. Stown peaks up too far, but Amanek, that is a great trade. What a shot to come out. And Nico not failing them this time either. Three fresh. He's alone on this Man. side right now. KD. Unforced error is coming in right now, though. Right. I mean, running out before the flash. Your teammate was setting the flash up for you. You need to wait just a split second longer before going around that corner because you know the flash is coming. Don't walk into the shot here. Amanek, he's got the right idea. Kadian, all he saw was a leg, and it was enough. 40 seconds now. Nico, always the man you want. Oh, but he might actually get caught in the middle here. Yeah, out in the open, <laughs> just takes him down. Kadian thinking, sweet. I'll find that kill. Triple for him, five to one. Heroic arm. Uh, they look very, very good right now. That is an extremely hard round to lose for G2. No doubt. And it's not a matter of throwing Jax under the bus, but when the communication, that's what you always wonder with the international teams, if the communication is on point. But it feels like Nico, somewhere the wires got crossed there because that flash goes off. You see it a split second after Jax dies. So if it's just a, 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 a split second timing between coming around the corner after the flash or before the flash, that can save the round for you right there. So fifth, five to one, Heroic in the lead now on the CT side and heartbreaking given what it took for them to get that one round on the board. Ah, they fought for it, they need a build behind it. Quick trade refreshes there, it's a pretty good uh, setup. And the bomb is on the ground, yep. so everything's been given away. Kadian and Stown will do a little bit of cleanup in the middle, and Hunter, it's a good kill. Very unlikely to win the round, although that is uh -oh. a very crisp headshot to take down Stown. It's still Hunter. He's got Kevlar. He won them the last one versus two. This is a one versus four. He's now turned into another one on two. He's got time. And even though they knew where he was 20 seconds ago, that doesn't matter anymore. He could be anywhere. He could be anywhere on this map at this point. And so 55 seconds. Again, with these rounds going down early, it leaves room to maneuver with if you find yourself in these positions. And so Refresh is taking a pot shot. He knows where, that's, where that bomb is. So long as the bomb is still there, they know where Hunter has to go eventually, with 40 seconds on the clock. Yeah, but it is right on the edge. I mean, if he had a smoke or something, he could smoke it off and pick it up, but He's he actually doesn't, so he maybe has to show himself he really wants to. Oh, there it is, he Chris. threads that needle! And now he's gonna make a run for it. Now they did notice, so he's not gonna have a lot of time here. Straight for it, no doubts at all. Don't expose yourself to the middle, because refresh is coming right up. Oh man. The whole major for two people could ride on this and refresh just clocks him as he comes trying to reposition inside of that bomb site. That is a nice headshot. Double kill for refresh and a six to one scoreline here. Man. We get a timeout here. I think we get a timeout call. They need it. I'd be surprised if we didn't. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing Malik go for it though, Coco. Okay, so we may not actually get a timeout. We may go straight into the next one here. We think that G2 would want to kind of calm it down a little bit, but uh <laughs> They're making memes on the fly. They're making memes on the fly. Good for them. Hunter, though, that was an extremely effective um, eco round coming up for G2, though, because they did some serious damage to Heroic's economy, and they got the bomb line, so they have plenty of money going into this round. So G2 should have everything they need. Early mid-aggression coming through. Caden with that HE over the top. Doesn't do any damage. 
I'm so shocked by this start. Six to one in favor of Heroic. Okay. I'm having immediate flashbacks to Nuke again. Now we're setting the beef off. Yeah, they just look like the, the more powerful team. Maybe that will make the difference. You're right. Trying to see if they could explode out, but even they're even second guessing that. The Molly into the smoke seems to have thrown them off. If they're not liking the look of that. But they do have Hunter on a mission. He might have even called out the slowdown on B. He might have even said, just wait, I'm actually pretty deep into middle. Maybe I can find a kill. Spray, maybe I can hit that, but doesn't connect Hunter. Oh, he's been found. Oh, he spins around anyway. That's an outrageous fight to win. Refresh, he's going to be kicking himself. He should have been dead, Hunter, already. Now he's opened up the bomb site, and if he stays alive in here, doesn't even matter if he gets another kill. Just being alive in jungle is going to be pain. Yeah, uh, Stown moves out. I actually completely understand this. He doesn't want to be exposed to Hunter walking up behind him, so he's going to try and take the fight to them instead. Yep. He could ruin this round for G2, and that would be almost too heartbreaking. Amanek around the corner of the shadow is showing he free fires it. It's a lot of damage, but it's not a kill. And they're going to back out here. They don't actually want to fight this round. G2, that round is won by Hunter just being insane with that, with that spin. Listen, he's a hunter after all. He's living up to the name. Slow, patient play. Moves himself into a position to find the kill, and now they benefit G2. And this is also just because of that last round, because that last round was so expensive for Heroic. They need to put themselves in a position to save. They can't even take the fight. It's still six to two, so there is, you know, the Heroic have a little bit of margin for error here as well. It's not the end of the world if they were to give up this round and it's set themselves not, up for the next one. But I feel like I'm, I'm starting to feel like a little bit of a broken record because this is again one of those moments where it's great to win a round like this, but if you build nothing behind it, then it, that doesn't last very long. You can't just win the, the odd round here and there. We need, we need the whole block coming through here for G2 where they can just pick it up, crush that. I mean, this is some, this is just the basic of playing this, the T side, right? You just want to kill that CT economy so that they at least don't have the luxury of having orbs and grenades every single round, which is kind of, it's not that far away here for, for Heroic if, or for G2. If they can win this next round, that's it. Job done, and then they're right back in the map. This next round is pivotal. Another true test of G2's mental side of the game here as we get into it. We're live, full buys on both sides, although a little light on the side of Heroic. They had to juggle there just to get some nades out. Nico with an AWP and top it off the spawn. Goes for another shot, not gonna find it. Stalin gets forced back though. That's Shush taking quite a bit of damage here. Has to be careful, and now Hunter looking for the follow-up. Oh, he heard that footstep. He heard that noise, and there it is. Catches Devin in the open, looks for the trade, not gonna find it, but the rest of the team are going straight out to the apartments. It's all on refresh. He's the only one that can save this bomb site, and Jack says no. Takes him down. Shush now in the market, but again, like you said, he's weak from earlier, and Heroic back on out. They do not have the money. A third round for G2 here. They just, they can't keep fighting him. It's actually a smart move for Heroic to give up that right away. Three versus five, it is, or three versus four, it's not worth it. Stay alive instead. Yeah, just keep putting yourself in a position to drop two rifles. If you have three guys surviving, you're going to get a buy round for the next one. You can just constantly do that, but eventually you're gonna run out of rounds. You can't just keep giving up rounds either. You're gonna need to start winning them too. But a 6-3, I mean, you still have a margin for error here that's pretty considerable heroic, so. True. It's still early days in this half, but G2 are starting to get some confidence. Yeah, I was gonna say, you notice how they're playing a little bit more like what you were suggesting in the beginning, that, that forceful nature of them. You see Hunter is in the middle, taking a fight to connect and he was ready, he was like, all right, one fight, go. I'm gonna swing back towards Catwalk. He nearly had that kill on refresh as well. So I love it, I wanna see a lot more out of it. Both him and Nico get out there and take the fight. I mean talk about those two but Jackson's got that crazy nature as well now sometimes yeah. it backfires on him he's a little bit too aggressive he doesn't he doesn't think nearly enough but at the same time it might be what they need right now just don't let that heroic feel so comfortable I just like that they have Hunter in a position to not only get kills but gather info just let him get out there and do the work whereas this is a tactical timeout called by both teams now it's gotta be the most photogenic audience member we've had. He's rocking it. Six to three, tenth round. Bit of a timeout being called, and right now, Aminek on two kills, Nico on two kills. Hunter has done almost all of the work to get these three rounds. He is nine and seven, only outdone by Kadian, who's a 10 on the other team. So pretty impressive stuff for Hunter to try and carry this team through, get them back in this first half. It's their map. They badly need it. Their major lives are on the line here. 
Gideon, quick jump down, smoke to prevent the Molotov. Yep, he read that coming, but there's another smoke on top, so he can't see much. Well, they were ready for that aggression, though. They were hoping that Gideon was going to be down here looking for a fight. Hunter and Jax paired up. Jax even just sacrificing himself to set himself up as the dummy, as the target dummy. You know, you trade me, that's cool. Hunter's going to be right there behind us, and we can accelerate behind it. But now, Gideon has backed off of mid, stopped and taking his place. With a minute 20 on the clock, G2 have gotten at least a decent amount of map control to work with, and they still have yet to use that brutal apt play that we've seen so far this tournament from them on this map. They can still go back to that strategy. Yeah, you're right. That's something that we haven't really spotted yet. Tessa's quick peek. That's dangerous. Good headshot to follow it up, though. Jax is down. Amanek trying to hunt it. Tessa is just staying elusive back here. He'll find one more kill before he's finally out. But a nade in hand and refresh gets taken out by Nexa. Here comes a counter knee down. It's not going to kill anyone, but it'll do some damage to Nexa. Three on three now. Heroic have given up on some of these rounds pretty early. This one seems more even. You want to go for it here, or you give to keep giving them rounds because you're saving guns. That could also be a bad pattern to fall into. It's dangerous. At some point, you need to decide to take the fight, and it's not looking like it's going to be today, Heroic. Unless Shush were able to find somebody right now. Yeah. They're still kind of holding passively. That bomb is taken down by half. Nico catches Kadian in the open, and that's going to make things very expensive now for Heroic. Even putting themselves in a position to back off and save this AWP style. And you see, he's got that in the back of his mind right now because he doesn't go for the repeat. Instead, he looks to run. Nico trying to hunt him down right now. If you can get this AWP, that would be massive. Chasing. There it is. Does. Oh, wow. Well played. So there you go, you keep saving those guns, saving those guns, Heroic, and that puts you, I think you're bang on there, Anders. If you keep getting into that mindset of, oh wait, hold on, we need to save, we need to save, you're not going for the truck dealer. You're just constantly thinking on the back foot. You're playing not to lose, you're not playing to win. And I think in that three on three, you know, Heroic set themselves up right at the outskirts of the bomb site, and they're just thinking, it's a three on three, we can either just wait and lock them into the bomb site, or if we get a kill and make it a two on three, then we go for it. But when they then lose Kadian instead, they just all on Ravel Trim there, and they lose the AWP at the end. This is what they need right now. G2 started to come alive once again. We saw it on Nuke, and it almost worked out for them. We need to see it once again here. It's a four on four as Nico is traded for Stout. And they have some mid control here on the G2 side. Only really that M4 alive on Shusha, though Kadian is going to go pick up another gun up here in the hallways. Yeah, he's going to find that AK. That's It's worth doing. We got to give some credit to Nexa on that last round, though. Without him, True. The double, it's not happening. And now oh, he's again taking point in mid, and Hunter has managed to get through here. Yep, a little bit of a spot. Shush finding one. He's going to get traded immediately by Nexa. Nexa with another triple, and Hunter catching Kadian. G2, five rounds on the board, Anders. That's hard when you're getting sandwiched in the middle like that. It's a classic play from the CT side. And they outlive it. Nexa, excellent control here. Nice spray on to test. That is so cool. Six to five. Now, it didn't look like in the beginning that this map pick was a good idea for G2. Now you're starting to see it come together. Slowly, round for round, they're asserting some dominance. Stop lock, though, on the heroic side. So they're pushing their chips all in as well. They're saying, all right, yep. our money's not looking that good, but we can afford this. Now let's try and see if they lose this round. That is devastating. That is the door wide open for G2 to get back into the semi-final in a big way. Again, Inferno is the deciding map. Yes. We, we should get all want that to happen. If we could get Inferno, just the legendary series ender. We need that. The first Unity G2 to just keep their cool, stay focused in this. They're getting pumped up, they're getting hype. But I really like that Heroic have elected to go for a double AWP in this round. We have yet to see this from them, and that could catch G2 off guard. Perhaps not expecting one here as Nexa thinking about rounding that corner. Yep, there's the flash, there's the peak. A little bit of a spot. This puts a lot of pressure on that defense because they've lost all of middle. They have no idea what's coming next. Three people defending the bomb sites down. He actually gets some damage in, but it's not enough for a kill. That's interesting. Shush is playing down on that A ramp, and they need to get rid of him because otherwise they can't really cross the bomb site. They're so nervous about it at all times. And on the site itself, refresh. He goes down so quick, Shush with a double, and Stown is there as well. They almost made it, G2, but Heroic will turn it around. Seven to five. Shush, the pivotal play, with triple Once kill. Again. That's why they needed to get rid of him, because they're basically fighting three or four different angles 
while trying to, to track across the bomb site, it's too much. He's still just running away with it. 13 kills on the board for Shosh. Seven of those were within the first four rounds of this half. So he started strong, and now he's just showing up again when his team needed him to. And now they know, G2, how this is playing out because they saw the double AWP as well. In we game, Nico winning the duel versus KD in mid, though. There we go. More of that. And look, again, we're back with the Bloodlust. He just wants to fight them. Oh, no damage. Looks like it could have been. But he knew there's a shot from Amanek. And there's that, like you said, the immediate pop out. No grenades, no nothing. They just walk out of the A apartments. You've been calling for it a number of rounds. And especially with the distraction of Nico alone, Scope, solo, yeah. up in middle, it's so hard to deal with. Nico opping in mid is going to throw things out of whack because he's your palace leader. So if all of a sudden Nico is, is getting killed somewhere else, that's got to throw a wrench in things for Heroic, where they all of a sudden they have to try and figure out on the fly what it is that G2 are preparing. I've got to say, I love this version of Nico. I really, I, I wish they could have had it from the start of the map here, but the fact that he started to wake up a little bit, it's just the level of confidence is hard to imagine. That you can do. This isn't just any old random game. It's a semi final in a major. You run mid alone with an AWP to combat off the entire team. Now, he did lose it at the end, which is a bit of a shame, but it's going to be a sixth round for G2, building back in the game in a massive way. Hunter, 10 kills. Nico up to seven. Remember, a couple of rounds ago, he was down at two along with uh, Amanek. He's turned it around in such a massive fashion. Yeah, this is the play. So well done. It's just hard right now. I still don't have that feeling that G2 are fully here yet. It feels like they're just on the edge of that breakthrough, but not quite yet. Well, the rounds that are so important right now is when G2 managed to get a man advantage. That's the thing. Both of these teams have been excellent so far at winning 5v4s. And so if G2 keep giving up these opening shots, now it's on G2 to find to come up with it. Refresh out of the picture. Nico blind takes him out. 80% win rate for G2 in situations like these. When it's a 5v4, they get the opening kill. They're so hard to put away here. G2 now in a prime position to tie things up, although Stein's gonna have something to say about it. He catches Hunter. Oh no. Right behind him, Jax, he almost caught oh. He might still. That actually is a cool move for Jax. That, I mean, it's from Stown as well. Individual plays here. This isn't even about strategy. It's just saying, I see an opening, I'm gonna go for it. And man, if they could have caught Stown in return, it would have been fine. Now, Shush is playing Shadow. And Nico's thinking about walking out. He's got that AK in hand. Smoke goes up towards the jungle, trying to block off Kadian, but he's going to move in front of it. Doesn't want to get blocked out. That's how he gets the kill on Amanek, and Shush comes in. That's a great one-two punch. Soon as that orc rings out from jungle, all of the attention is on him. And Shush knows. Spray from Stow. He's going to continue nearly taking down Jax, who's going to die to Kadian instead. It's eight to six. I wonder if Shush puts himself there because Refresh is dead because that's where Refresh has been for the past few times in Shadow. And so Nico is probably checking the scoreboard, like, like who's dead on the map right now? Refresh is dead, okay, maybe he's not gonna be Shadow, I can focus somewhere else. And then surprise, surprise, Shush is there shooting him in the back. I mean, that is a tilt-worthy moment right there if you're Nico. Because he was checking, yeah. he was checking, and he turns away, and that's when Shush peaks. And you could be right, that's one of those important things that's usually very hard to catch in the middle of it, but it really matters not just where you get the kill, but who you're actually who you're killing. Down. And that's part of the communication that's so hard in Counter-Strike, just to pull that out while you're still fighting and say, wait a minute, maybe that was the wrong guy, isn't he usually playing somewhere else? Hard to catch in the moment. Nico, again, on a mission in the middle, he's had these opening kills, back to back now. Can you do it one more time? Oh my god, they're, no, they're never going to see this. He's here so quickly. He avoids Shush in the middle, who almost walked up behind him, but there should be no way for Kadian to see this coming. He might just walk up right in front of the window and shoot him in the face. Scope is up. If he unscopes, he's going to know it. Nico, ready and waiting. And there it is. Huge opening. Steals the AWP, and now he can hold it. Oh, this is beautiful. Nico is such a god at this game. Going to fall back from the flashbang, and they're setting it up. Another kill. He's doing everything. He truly is the eternal MVP of this game. Ha! There's another. Oh, he's getting the headshot on Tessus as well. He's just won the round on his ears, willed it, manifested it into reality. Refresh and shush. They've got to be left wondering what is going on. A quarter kill. He wants them back in this game, and nothing is going to stop him. Now he just needs to get the ace. Let his teammates figure out where Shush is, and then let Nico just get that ace for the last round of this half. Please make it happen, because Shush is perfectly capable of running this back 1v3. He is a real threat. As soon as he gets this info, he's just spot next out, and immediately it's spotted, and he goes down. Emenek with the kill.
Oh, I feel G2. What a round. Nico, I just. It's there it is. It's impossible to overstate the impact that he has on this game. But the way that he set it up, too, with the, with the bait, the footstep to act as if he was wrapping around. So he comes back around with the deagle, and Tessis just takes the bait because he's expecting Nico to be on the flank. Walks right into that deagle. It's just perfect play through and through from Nico. It's a thing of beauty to behold. And this is now just blown wide open. Eight to seven. It could be either of these teams' second half now. Yep. Mirror of the first half on new, similar situation. I can't understand it. How can you do this just back-to-back -back rounds? Even the rounds they lose, Nico is still in there in the middle, winning opening fights. Double HE on the CT side here. See if they could get anything done with that. Nexus going to take a peek into middle. But yeah, this is important. Refresh. What an opening and a dink on Nico. He has to back on out, but they're coming up behind him. Oh! Oh, Lord! He gets another one nearly there. And that shot on Refresh! That is a godlike move! And Tessis is now entirely on his own with the bomb drop halfway across the map. How does he live? He is on four health at the outset of that round, and he still manages to double kill as they're jumping on top of him. Amazing. Is this Nico? Is he finally showing up? Hunter's been trying to lead the way for a long time now, but if Nico's starting to warm up and he can have a star performance, everything can turn around here. 4G2 and Heroic are going to be the ones on the back foot. Tessess, though, is always a threat in pistol rounds. And now he's got a USP as well. He is lethal with this gun. Not to be underestimated. Hunter, though, he sees him, tags him up already. That's a bit unfortunate. 50 seconds, though. He's going to live a little while longer. Nico revealing his position too, but the timing is great for Hunter. And they turn that around. Massive plays. The man I, with, I can't believe it. It's the man with the goblin grip. Just wasn't, uh, wasn't quite there yet. Not this time. Got to tilt that mouse even harder. Dude, as if the tape wasn't enough. This is Nico's perspective. Yeah, just instant goosh. But that's, what the, oh. that's the thing, man. Nico is so insane in pistol rounds. So sick, a player with his aim. Kovac and Kovac, just doing work. Yeah, they are back again. Okay, no eco, okay, so the full eco coming in from Heroic. They didn't get the bomb plant, so we'll get the Glocks. A couple of P250s, so they can still do some damage here. And yeah, sure enough, just too many guns here for Jax to handle. He gets overwhelmed. That's a bit awkward. Yeah, leaves the gun top mid as well. Can they manage that? Uh... I was gonna say that it kind of commits them to sticking around. They sort of have to, to hang around a little bit here to not give it up. Maybe that's what Heroic are also banking on, saying, all right, if they're going to be holding top mid, maybe we can get to, to the A-apps early enough to at least get the bomb down. If you get a kill in a bomb plant in this round where you have almost nothing, that's fine, that's great. That's terrific, and now you go for a waterfall onto the A-bomb side as well here. Heroic, I love this strategy. It's going to be so hard for Nexa to stop. Yeah, bomb plant will be massive. It's on the ground now. Important kill. That might have been the most uh, the most critical oh, shot that he could have had. That'll shut it all down. Played everything. Nexa comes in with a quad kill to seal the round. That's a good job. G2. They're taking steps in the right direction. That MP9 was something eight. else. Four kills with the MP9. He's got monstrous cash now. He can drop an AWP over no problem at all. I am so impressed with that hold. That is not easy to do when you've got four guys. Even with pistols, they're dangerous. Pros, their aim. They'll take your head off. Nexus survives, nine to eight, G2 taking the lead. And yeah, there's the AWP drop for Amanek. On the side of Heroic, they elect to go for the off themselves. So, trusting in Kadian to come up with a kill. He's got 13 of them so far. He's been solid with that AWP, but in the end, even that wasn't enough to stop Nico. 15th round coming your way. Heroic, they are pretty well equipped as well. A lot of noise being made here by Hunter. This is some invaluable information to go off of if you're heroic. They want to try and take advantage of it. Jackson position though, and he gets the kill to kick things off. Sick HE, and then, yep, the Famas on top. I don't know if they were expecting that because they were hearing Hunter stomping around on short. I'm wondering if heroic thought we can try and take advantage of this and get out there, catch him before he rotates back to the bomb site. And lo and behold, Jax is just ready and waiting. Playing very spread out right now, Heroic, which when you have this much time, maybe that's fine. You go for a kill somewhere, you try and find it, 
Fadian making noise running up, and I bet you Hunter will have called it into Jack saying, don't peek that angle. He might be there. He's going to take a quick look. Still a chance here for Hero to get back into the round, but it's a pretty good defense right now between Hunter and Jax. They've got a little bit of a crossfire. Hard to make their way out. Hunter getting shut down, but Jax on the follow-up. He's done a good job in this round. It's now Kadian and Shush, and Shush is all the way at the A-bomb side. Nico, I think, has already heard him, and he's going to win that fight. So Kadian on his own. One versus three with less than 40 seconds on the clock. He knows that someone is in here. He's going to make the jump down. A little bit of a late oh. shot. I don't think that's going to fool anyone. Jax knows, and he'll find the triple. That is so cool, though. That is so cool, though. Takes the shot to cover the sound of him dropping. That's just a little tech, a little detail yeah. there from Kadian. You have to try. You got to try. Just He just doesn't obviously know that Jax is waiting behind. He's maneuvered himself into a position where he'll get the backstab. But now that is going to be G2 just continuing to extend their lead. Countdown has begun to get into this round. Heroic without a bomb plant. It's just going to be, man, a couple of pistols, a couple of nades. Should not have too much to work with. But again, it's still early days in this second half. So there's no reason to go for any kind of weird fourth spies in this scenario. Just take this round of the teeth. See if you can get another bomb plant. You've been very good about getting bombs planted so far. Heroic. So your money reflects that. So just get another bomb plant and then focus on the next one. Yeah, that has to be the plan. But on the flip side here, there has to be a bit of fear that's creeping into Heroic at this point in time. 10 to 8, you can feel how much they're warmed up. You've, you've already felt the damage that Nico he can output to your team. So, again, their map pick, Heroic, they must be feeling nervous. No need pistols in this round. Setting up a little bit in middle. Now, they stole a round like this earlier, which was uh, a, you know, a big way that they got back into the game. On Nuke now, could they do it again here? That would almost be too much. They've got double orb on that CT side, though. So actually, the pistols, this is one of those rounds where if you can get close enough, maybe that could work against the double orb setup. It's a long ways away, though. Smoke in the window. I'm going to be trying to see if they can get that mid control and probably will just keep running from there once they get the first point of contact. They're going to get real close here. Can anyone help out Nico if they turn the corner? Maybe Nexa can go for a wide swing, but this is not without a little bit of danger. Smoke is there. But the APK will just power through. Nexa goes down. That was all the way by Shadow. Kamenek trying to hold this line. 20 seconds. Someone needs to call that out on the G2 side. Play for time. Get a couple of kills. Even if they get the bomb plant down, they're going to try and rush that AWP. And they keep trading successfully so. And it's a 2 1 2. 10 seconds on the clock. Nico, he wanted to beat that corner and find someone. Oh, a great setup! Headshot sprayed down and Jax on the other side. And it will be G2 to win the round, but only barely. Mm -hmm. Again, another bomb plant. Yeah. <laughs> Nico feeling the heat. He played that situation perfectly, but it's still cause for concern here for G2 because Heroic are getting these bombs planted almost every round. That's going to have a reflection on their economy. They're going to have more money than they would normally to buy nades. But it's also a confidence booster for Heroic because they know how close they're cutting it each time. If they can keep getting the bomb planted, it's G2 who are on the back foot having to play retake every time. And that's never comfortable for G2. So we did get a tactical timeout called here. Now it's a question of whether or not uh, it's going to be on Heroic. What does Heroic have to add to it? Exist has gotten a lot of praise so far as the coach for Heroic. I mean, big event for him. He was brought on for the purpose. Kadian has been nothing but, you know, saying nothing but praise for him. But he doesn't quite know the playbook yet, and so that's been one of the main things here. I mean, for your first tenure as a coach like this, it's a pretty good run. <laughs> it can't be upset. He's a major champ in his own right. Indeed. I think this round illustrates so clearly what is the danger of giving up that connector and mid-control. Because that's just pistols, and because they got everyone in connector, they almost wipe out the defense on A. Nexer is on his own, Nico's on his own. Even Amanek at CT spawn kind of on his own. So that's why you can't give up that mid control. Here is a deep nade landing on top of Heroic. On the best start to the round here. Nexer and Amanek are on the other side. A little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a shake there. But he gets the kill on Shush anyway. And that's all they need. They didn't see the setup either. They don't know that Nexa is holding close. So instead of pouncing Heroic, they decide to back off. They could probably intimate. That's been something that we've seen from a lot of offers where they pair up with the rifler in case they get swung on. The rifle is there to save them. So Heroic are probably guessing that that's the case, but they can't be sure. 
So trying to play that information right now, Heroic. Oh, what a move. G2. That's what we've been missing. We've just been talking about how they need to stay alive and keep the economy going, but now they've sent Jax out on a scouting mission. And this is the other big way to win. Get the information on the CT side. They can start to rotate Hunter over real soon. Jax is making his way down below. Nico hiding back here. Instant shutdown. What a double kill for him. And he swings back in for more. Jax is going to be there to help him out. And it's all on refresh here. More damage is needed, more kills, but it's not going to happen. Amanek will drop him. And it's another round, 12 to 8. They have come through in the first <laughs> half, or the second half here. They've won five in a row to start this off with. Heroic have not picked up a T-side round yet. And that time, they do not get a bomb plant. They don't even get close to getting a bomb plant. Nico playing anti-flash, as you can see, just turning into the wall, trying to dodge that flash grenade. Plays it perfectly. And G2, on their map pick, on this CT side, they are looking confident. They're looking good. It's on Heroic now to come up with it. And while they do have enough for some rifles, still a threat in this round. Amanek showing that he can be mobile with this AWP, not in the same place every time here, trying to keep Heroic guessing. They're gonna try and walk out, shush, just like G2 do sometimes. He's on the edge. He could flash to set it up, and he's got an opportunity there. That's a cool move for Nico. He dunks down and stays out of the line of that AK-47. That would have been a scary start to the round. Yeah, really well done. I love that setup, though. That's so cool. And then from a default setup as well, Heroic can still pull a magic trick out of the hat like that. Oh, but this is interesting. Do they just go hunting for him? It looks like it. Who wins this duel? I mean, there are a lot of angles to cover. They are going to double up against Shush. They want to take this away from him. He goes right there, just the shoulder, the YP. Oh, no! Shush is there instead, and that kills both of them. Who could have seen that coming? He's hardly even touched. 50 seconds on the clock, and now they're going to pick up the bomb. And they are actually going to run it the other way. Refresh is checking the B-bomb side. Oh, this is a huge outplay. Heroic. What a brilliant round. I, this is G2. They should wow. probably save if they even can. This is what? The third, uh, fourth round that Shush has given Heroic? Yeah. Every round, uh, like half of Heroic's rounds, it's been Shush just coming up with the goods with a double kill that just makes it possible for Heroic to win the round. This has been Shush's map so far, as far as Heroic are concerned. And 19 know, kills for him. Immediately they know, not even going to try and go for it here. Shush though, he can still make this even harder on them. G2 have some money, they're going to find Hunter already. Every rifle right now is worth its weight in gold if you're on that G2 team. You have to keep it alive. Jack, he could be a hero and sneak into the bomb site if he's really lightning fast, but it's unlikely. Refresh is kind of hanging around, waiting for it, and Jax, surely not. He's going to back on out. Doesn't want to risk it. Amanek is going to get caught, so they lose everyone but Jax. And first round in the second half, he's been picked up by Heroic here. And a bomb plant and a bomb going off. We haven't seen the flames on the stage in a while here in this half. Got the cheering session going half as well in the back. And now we're going to see what they're capable of here. G2 jerseys, G2 fans. And obviously G2 fighting back, doing a terrific job. <laughs> nice. 12 to 9, Anders, 12 to 9. G2 still keeping it together. They had the money to buy, so we will have the AWP. We will have the rifles. And as far as Heroic are concerned, it's a change of pace for them. Straight into the mid, Cadian. So aggressive. Does this work, though? Does he catch Nico? No, he's never expecting Nico to be there. Yeah, he was checking every other angle but that one. That's a bit of a shame. Texas, maybe an opportunity, but they're going to throw everything at him. Does put out the flames at his feet. Amanek will get the kill on refresh, though. And he's still a three on four right now. And remember, G2 were in this similar position. Whenever they would win a round on the T side, it got it got taken away from them right away. They really need to stop that from happening. And a good step in the right direction as they take down Nico. Three versus three. Jax up in the A apartment. That's, such a, that's a really good position to be in if they're coming up from middle like this. Well, they can assume. They can assume the jungle's been compromised with that flash over the top. I think that's what they were thinking here. And now steps right into Stout, and that's so tough. Jack's trying to make an information play, trying to figure out what's going on here. Gets caught, punished. We'll see if they expect another man on that A-bomb site, though. This could be it. Nexa could be in the position to save his team. Doesn't do it, though. Tessus wins that duel. Amanek now in a 1v2. G2 being, I think, way too active in that 3-on-3. Three -three. The clock is running against Heroic, or it was. Now that the bomb is down, it's a bit different. 
Amanek 1 versus 2. Tessis is holding the line with the AK, and he's low on health. He could find him and maybe take him down. He doesn't have a smoke, but if you could find one, maybe he could even get the ball. There's the attempted peek. He'll take him down. And now the question is, did he beat Stown's AWP? This would be a momentous clutch, but it's not going to happen. Stown will take him down instead. Just out and didn't even play around the bomb. Didn't even let him get close. Just shutting it down. Yep. 10 to 12. Confident play from Stown. He's the second top fragger on uh, Heroic right now. 19 kills. And really, he's just been every map so far this series. He's been turning up for Heroic, doing tremendous work. We saw a lot of that on Nuke, and here on Mirage, it's a lot of the same. 12 to 10, and we will get a hard eco called here by G2. I'm wondering if we're going to get the tag timeout called after this round here from uh, G2. Where it's like, okay, time to put on the brakes. We're going to have the buy round here coming up after this round of eco. I wouldn't be surprised. That's two rounds in a row here for Heroic, and you don't want, to, you don't want Heroic getting much more momentum than this. I mean, this is Mirage after all. Oh. I see Zed, though. Good start. They can steal that AK. Still too far away from the site here to make a big difference. Give that AK over to Nico next round. See what's happening. Yeah, just already. Oh, oh clever. Now they're going to try and see if they can swing for it. They should never be close to this round, but they're doing some damage. Next are coming in. There's absolutely no way. Refresh is back here, and they do not have a kit, so they're going to have to move fast, but they've got him locked in the corner. Crouching out, he gets the one, but Nexa will take him down! There is no way! Nexa with the triple and G2! They robbed him of the round! Nico with the pop-off as well, says it all. Starting to get that energy going on the side of G2. That was a hard eco, Anders! They had a CZ and a bunch of USPs! Heroic, talk about throwing it away! That's a one in a thousand, maybe one in a ten thousand round. You pull it out in the semi-final of a major. Unbelievable uh -huh. scenes. Oh, it's real. Nexa just... What a play from him, and what a massive round. Oh, the hype. Yeah, Nico, he is feeling it right now. 22 kills. He is outfragging everyone. This is so cool. But you gotta love how these players are just embracing being on land. You know, you got the, <laughs> you got the fans in front of you. You're just popping off after these big rounds, dude. That is the life. 13 to 10, and I mean, now that's just a monster round for G2. That was a Nico again, a hard Nico. Now they actually have everything they need here going into this next round, G2. Whereas Heroic are going to be on the back foot. Little light on the grenades on the side of Heroic. So let's see what they've got in store for us now. If we're going to get more aggression in mid. When history is written, that could well be the round that people are going to go back and look at it and say, that was Heroic's ticket potentially straight into the grand final. Yep. You never know what's going to happen. They had an opportunity there. They could have stolen it away and, and got right back into the game, maybe tie up the scoreline at the very least. But now, G2 are a step closer and almost at that third map. Nexa and Amanek playing double on the ramp. Shush is up in the apps again. Very similar setup here. Flash coming out, but they win every fight. Headshot for Nexa. Amanek in a secondary fight with the AWP Hunter. Crisp and clean to take down, down its refresh and shush. Completely on their own. And this is the money as well for Heroic that's about to get wiped out. Yep, this was the all or nothing round for Heroic. They've tapped their bank completely. <laughs> Nexa just assassinates refresh. Refresh has no idea. And shush, well, the hero of this map so far for Heroic. The monster high impact kills the rounds, and he's gonna get another one. Takes Nexa out of it, but he will get traded immediately by Nico. And if it continues this way, I mean, that's 14 to 10. It should be a round of Eco coming up here for Heroic. G2 will have plenty of opportunities to force a third map. Inferno, Anders. We may actually get Inferno after all. Oh, this is brilliant. 14 to 10. They're looking so good right now. You can absolutely feel it. That, that final breakthrough for G2. Confidence has returned. Nexa is up there with the kills, almost catching up to Nico. Looking into the 25th round. Blind shot there from Amanek, not connecting on anyone. Nico, though, inside of the smoke as they run in front of him, and they are checking it, but too late. Nexa's on the other side. They're going to get chewed up trying to get to this bottom side. They wanted to change the speed, change the pace, and catch G2 off guard, but it is not happening. Hadian one versus four, and I think Jax oh. will hear him stepping. Yep, he knows 
This is looking just fine. Nice attempt from Heroic, but instead it's 15. It's map point now for G2. But because that was the force coming in there from Heroic, I mean, it's just, they're just gonna barely be able to squeak anything out of this round here. Gonna have some rifles, have to go for Galil certainly to get some nades on the board. And so Heroic now, they need to play perfectly from here on out to force overtime. A little quiet over there now, lads, huh? It's, uh, <laughs> show, I need to show a little bit of hype here. Your boys need your energy. For good reason. There they, we go. They're in a little bit of trouble, yeah. Got to wake them up. 15 to 10. One more round. G2, they've been looking not as powerful as I thought to come into the game. Both maps here, slow starts. They had to sort of work their way into it. Not so much Nico, even a slow start on this map, but it doesn't really matter. He's working all the time. It, it, I don't know what it takes to shut him down. I have no idea what it would actually take to stop him at this point. The determination and grit on this one person. Well, he's the top rated player so far in this tournament, Anders. So he is the man to beat, without a doubt. Map point for G2 and some aggression as well. Trying to get that info early. Next, they kind of catch him in the open on the A bomb site, though. Four players survive for Heroic. Oh, nice spray through. Heroic need to keep the dream alive. They desperately do not want to go to a third map. It would be much better to end it here. An awkward Molotov. Nexa, he's still going to live. That's unbelievable. Jax with a kill on Shush and now. Hadian and Tessas. The bomb is not actually planted for this mid play. Oh. I think they can defuse it from behind the boxes. I'd be really, really careful with this move. And they're making a lot of noise. Amanek hears it. Oh, and one shot, one kill to take him down. And Kadian, he is in trouble. I think there's no way he could do this. They're already going to be on the bomb on the other side. They know where oh, it was in the open. He could see it. He gets the shot on Jax. Can he do more? No, he's going to be found this time. Can they get the defuse? It is close, and it's a third map.